Fox News. So Fox News is in trouble. The stock may be okay okay today, but you have to look at sort of long term. Where are they going? Where are they heading? First of all, the industry is changing dramatically, if you haven't noticed. And there's new opportunity for independent creators. So in the case of Tucker Carlson, it looks like if he can get out of his deal, he's going to be going over to Twitter and doing a show there. Maybe he'll come here as well. I think a lot of us want to be in a lot of places. I'm looking at Twitter right now myself and saying, okay, can we do live there? Right now you can't, but I think that that will change in time. I like live. I like live because I get to see you. I get get to talk to you. And I get to see exactly what you're thinking, which is a whole new whole new medium, right? For me, I'm so used to like looking at the camera and just going. And now I I get to do more than more than one thing at once. And I get to hear, oh, Yankee Hill. Thank you so much. That's a very sweet say. Um, He said, you know, just very, very nice comments from all of you. I, I, I do appreciate it. But when I look at a company like Fox and I think about the position that they were put in, first of all, they never should have been in that position. And by the way, if you are in that position, gosh darn it, why wouldn't you have seen it through? I mean, think about what that means for freedom of speech. Well, I think they couldn't see it through because I think the reality was they had a series of texts and messages from some of their anchors, maybe some of their management that reflected one thing. And then they went on air and did something else entirely. And so that's where it was really going to come back and bite them in the you know what, so to speak. But what that tells you is where was management? Why was it that the anchors were thinking one thing and then saying another thing on air because they were so desperate for ratings. I mean, that's when you need sort of the adult to step in. And what I would just say um, is that, look, networks are supposed to be like that. I, I've worked at a lot of networks and, and they're very top down. It's why I actually don't like them <laughs> because I want to just be able to talk and tell you exactly what I think and and I'll deal with the consequences, right? I, I don't like to have that kind of system around me. But when you do have that system in place, it's kind of like it's, it's like the army, like everybody needs to like fall in line and everybody needs, needs to do what they are told to do. And if you don't have a strong general who's leading the troops, then your troops are going to go here, there and everywhere. And the whole thing is kind of going to fall apart, which is exactly what happened at Fox. Meanwhile, when you do have people, myself included, that say something provocative which by the way, you knew I was going to (laughs) say, and then you don't support them. Well, think about that. I mean, so they clearly supported enough Tucker Carlson in what he was saying about January 6th and his documentary, et cetera. I mean, they were the ones that were paying for the cameras to go in there and roll tape. And then they suddenly had a change of heart. Like, I don't buy that. It tells me it was weak leadership which means just like Anheuser-Busch, not being able to come out in front and deal with a crisis head on, you get a similar situation there at Fox where you don't have anybody that's mining the store. And so they're allowing the train to leave the station and then they're like, oh no, what do we do after the fact? And the answer is to get rid of Tucker. I mean, what a shame. Because if you really felt strongly that he shouldn't be there doing the January 6th stuff, then Why didn't you speak up? Why didn't you say something? When organizations, big organizations, especially ones with quote unquote talent, (laughs) where we all got lots of opinions and lots of personality, when they are not run, when they are not managed, you have a power vacuum. And in that power vacuum, you got a lot of people with sharp elbows and they kind of go further and further and further out on that risk curve. So that risk curve got really steep and there was no one there to kind of pull them back and rein them in. So if I were the Murdochs, I'd just clean house. I'd be like, hey, you know what? Unless Lachlan wants to do it. I mean, he doesn't strike me as much of a news guy. <laughs> Sorry. No. So he, he can't do it. And it, it, clearly they, they, they are fine just getting rid of people, getting rid of people, getting rid of people. I'll tell you, talent's not an easy thing to find. Good luck on that one, guys. I know you get the system, right? Like, so to a certain extent, it's like, okay, eight o'clock is a sweet spot. And the network itself is always going to have a certain kind of built in viewership. But if you take that for granted, just like Alyssa something did over at Bud Light, I can go fast. Like, let this be a lesson to Fox. You cannot abandon your viewer. But by the way, simultaneously, you can't be totally led by them. 
you, you have to have some leadership. And so it's not just appeasing, but it's actually setting the news agenda and talking about the things that your anchors and, and talent are passionate about that hopefully won't wind up in an $800 million lawsuit with another two point what million coming there with billion, forgive me, billion coming their way with Smartmatic. I think it's going to come down to whether or not Suzanne Scott, who's the CEO, can really convince the Murdochs that she can right this ship. And maybe she needed Tucker gone in order to do that because maybe they were too much at odds. I don't know. I have no inside knowledge on any of that. I would just say there's a power vacuum there. It existed when she was there. Otherwise, I don't think you would have seen all these things unfold. And she really needs to kind of step up to the plate and show everyone who's boss, right? As they say. And that, that's my advice to her. I'm, I'm going to say that because I'm a nice person and a charitable person. And if she wants to keep her job, she's going to have to take charge. Just like if the guy at Anheuser-Busch wants to keep his job, he can't sit there and kind of make fun of all of us and say, oh, it was misinformation. So the stock price is holding up okay there at Fox for now, uh, but we'll see how long that lasts. I think if they're able to pull in new advertisers because they've got a softer style program, maybe that'll work. But for how long? I mean, keep in mind, the advertisers don't like Hannity either. I mean, they don't like anybody that's even slightly right of center. Right? I mean... They wouldn't even like me saying this, what I'm saying about, you know, okay, you don't put Dylan Mulvaney in a Bud Light commercial. They think you should, of course. So you have to be cautious in that you do not fall sort of victim to the mob. You do need to lead. And that's, that's what's critical. And if you're always like looking over your shoulder saying, well, are they going to, are they going to go after me now? Are they going to go after this talent now? Whatever then you're not leading. You're not leading because you need to enable all of your talent. Again, I use that word because it's what's used in the industry. You need them to be able to speak freely. You need them to be able to report, but also within the system because you are a system. 